All right. I hope everyone can um, hear us um, online as well as in person. Um, I'm Terry Green. Um, I serve on the U.S. ETDA board, and it is my pleasure today to introduce our breakout speaker, Valerie Burke. And Valerie is from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas Graduate School. Um, and um, she will be taking questions uh, closer to the end of her presentation. Um, so feel free to put them in the chat. Um, and if anyone is here in person who wants to, you know, ask questions, they can just come right up to the mic. Um, and so with that, I will leave it to Valerie to um, share with us. Did you hear that? That's graduate students sharing their research. Take it away, Val. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I am on West Coast time, so it is about 1.13 here. Um, and I don't know if it's a theme at most universities right now, but we are super short staff, so that's why I'm in a tie-dye shirt today. Um, I had to table an event. Um, we were hosting a Hispanic Heritage Month um, celebration, and I did not have enough time to switch back. And oh my gosh, it's 90 degrees here, so it is very hot. <clears throat> but I'm in the air condition now, and I'm very excited to present to you today. I'm the assistant dean for the graduate student services here at UNLV, and I've been with the graduate college for about eight years now. Um, we also house the Office of Postdoctoral Affairs, so I oversee that. Um, UNLV is an R1 high research activity institution. We were established in 1957, so it's a very young university. Um, we have about 30,000 students. Of those 30,000, 5,000 are graduate students. We also hold the designations of um, an HSI, MSI, and Anapesi. Um, if you want to talk about that later, I, that's usually a lot of questions come from that. And um, having all three is, is, a, is a big deal, and hence why we have events like today. And then... Um, we also are um, tied for first for the most diverse university in the country. So we have a lot, a lot going on. Um, one of the things that is in my graduate student services office is our thesis and dissertation office. Um, I have two part-time um, employees who help me. And um, basically, I'll do a little overview because we get their research, right? So we have very strict deadlines on when thesis and dissertations are due. Um, their formatting is um, to the T. We have a checklist of all the formatting that has to be done um, before it's uploaded to ProQuest. Um, so my team handles all of that. And um, I'm on my second slide. Can, can you guys see that? It says the Grad Academy. No, we still, we're still seeing your first slide, Val. Oh, wow. Let me try to share the whole screen and see what happened. She started yet? Or is this yes, she started. Okay, let me try. Entire screen. Now, can you see the second slide? Um, we're seeing the Grad Academy. Oh, yes. That works. That works. And then that one? Okay. Um, so when I first got here um, in this position about eight years ago, I was the first um, executive director. And what I created was the Grad Academy. Um, the Grad Academy is a central hub for evidence-based graduate student professional and career development programming, non-academic advising. Um, this unit we house um, or we host over 60 workshops a year in collaboration with a lot of our campus partners, of course. We host 11 signature events. Um, we do the all in nine academic advising, career support. In addition, we also offer four um, co curricular certifications and we have 10 programs. It is a lot. Um, and all of these are free professional and career development opportunities for my grad and my professional students. And um, we also have built this grad academy um, around six pillars, um, including personal, professional, career development, um, and then you'll see here our motto, innovative leadership, professional and career development. So that's the, the big hub that the grad academy um, encompasses. And then within, I mentioned those 11 signature events, the very first one I ever did was I created the Rebel Grad Slam. So you might have heard about the 3MT um, thesis a competition. It came out of the University of Queensland, and it um, has now branched into over over 100 different universities across the country. Um, so we adopted um, their um, 
their template and their styles of how to run the three minute thesis competition. So this basically tells you what it is. It's um, the idea is to explain um, for the graduate student who they are, what they study, why they study it and what their research questions are and then how they're gonna an analyze it. And then of course, we wanna know why does it matter to folks outside your field? Um, everyone gets one PowerPoint slide and it's a template. They can't um, change the colors, they can't put animation, they can't um, dress up. Um, and so it's, it's very standard. And then everyone has less than three minutes. So we'll have people at two minutes and 59 seconds and they're fine. As soon as you hit that three minutes, it goes red. Um, I would say though, we've only had maybe like a handful of students who have gone over the three minutes. Um, so it's definitely not something we worry about. Um, in the event too, we actually display a clock that does the countdown so they can see the clock and so can the judges. So why do we host this? So the Rebel Grad Slam three minute thesis competition is an opportunity for our graduate and professional students to showcase their research and scholarship in an engaging way. It's fast paced research rumble is what we've taglined it to highlight the innovative and impactful work being done by our LV graduate students. So they're coached too. We host um, a workshop a few months before the actual event that shows them this is what the, the, temp, the PowerPoint template will look like. This is what you can expect. We have a panel of previous winners who kind of give their, their tips and tricks, their best practices. And then we have some of previous judges also there um, giving their pointers. If you go to our website, which you'll see at the end, I have a slide that gives you the website for this. You'll see that we have um, YouTube videos where we interview our top winners from the past and, and they share their experience with it. Let's see here. Um, so obviously you can tell like the, the big deal is it, we want them to share their thesis and dissertation research, but honestly they can share any research they want. Um, if they're in their first year or their last year and whatever program they're in, they're all, everyone's invited to join. Um, but it, it is a lot. So <laughs> this is kind of our, this was our call last year. So if you want to register to participate, you had to fill out this um, form that said, you know, your name, where you are in your program, the title of your presentation. Um, and then we give them a specific deadline of when they have to submit that PowerPoint that we require. So we can pre-check it that they met all the parameters if they need to change anything like they went outside the line or changed the color, we'll send it back to them. Or if they um, put any pictures that aren't um, annotated, so things like that, we'll let them know. And then, um, like I said, you can visit our Rebel Grassland website, check out all our resources here for past winners. Uh, so it's it's our, our goal is for everyone to have be as much prepared and have all the resources at their fingertips so that when we get they get to their presentation, they're very comfortable. Because one of the big things is they have to remember um, to figure out how, when to use jargon and when to use layman's terms because their audience is going to be people not necessarily you know, with the same background as them in the same department. Um, we set up, let me show you the next slide. Oh, first I'll talk about judges. So we put out a call for judges through um, UNLV faculty, our staff, alumni and community members, they're all invited to judge. And then um, they're gonna receive training prior to the session so that everyone's on the same playing field. Everyone knows exactly what's expected of them ahead of time. And then also at the, the training, and, and the training is we just ask them to come like 15 minutes before their session um, just to review. But they're gonna be scoring on comprehension, content, engagement, and communication. And then um, you'll see on the next slide, we have a preliminary round. We have um, a semifinals and the finals. For the finals, we rent out a huge um, auditorium and we do pay and pick those judges to be like the UNLV president, the provost. Um, sometimes we've had elected officials. We've had all-star alumni, um, so things like that. So those ones are, are hand-picked. OK, just so you can kind of get a flow of how all this works. Um, our preliminary rounds, um, each student only participates in one round. So when they're filling out that original entry to, to participate and register for the event, we're gonna ask them, what is your preferred time slot, a Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday? And then you can see we do a noon, and then we do a uh, five o'clock. So working with different schedules, so hopefully we can accommodate everybody. You can see this one was via WebEx because um, during COVID, we didn't want to slow down. <laughs> Somehow we um, turned all this virtual and it, and it did go really, really smooth, but there was a lot that went on behind the scenes. Um, and then last year we did hybrid. And then this year we're going to, I think, be back in person. So just to give you all an idea. Um, semifinals. So 
of all of these sessions you see here, there's two Monday, two Tuesdays, and two Wednesdays. Um, everyone is randomly selected into a different slot. So it's not all STEM together or all liberal arts together or anything like that. Everyone is mixed into different categories uh, randomly. And then same with the judges. The judges don't have to have a background in the, whatever the presenters were studying because everyone's supposed to be talking as if nobody under, nobody knows your background. Um, that's kind of one of the fun parts about it. Um, so you'll see under each one of these is going to have um, a winner. So on Monday, we'll all be in person at noon and probably have three rooms. And each room would have about seven participants in each one. Um, and then we'd pick a first, second, and third place from each one of those. So you'll see here, um, that's who advances then to the semifinals. So again, each student will only participate in one round. This we do in um, a mini theater. So the first rounds are in a, uh, like a classroom setting or one of our conference rooms. And then now you're in a, uh, a mini theater for the semifinals. And there's three rounds and you have three different times and students can pick which time that fits their schedule best. They'll have a first choice and a second choice. And we can almost always accommodate that. And then our big winners from semifinals go on to the final rounds. And we host that um, in our theater in the student union one year. Um, one year we also hosted it in a theater over in our STEM building. So we kind of move it around campus because we have a lot of beautiful spaces. We want to make sure students know that. A lot of people will come to these events and say, this is the first time I ever knew this space was here. It's the first time I've been in here. Um, so it kind of helps with those things too. Um, so in the finals, they're on stage. There's a big screen with their PowerPoint. The, the timer is also amplified onto the, um, onto the wall screen. And then um, I'll go over the prizes in the next round, but we get these big, huge checks, kind of like you see on um, game shows, and we give those. Um, one thing we added, uh, I'd say maybe three years ago, is audience choice. So each round also has like a ballot, and anybody who's in the audience will check who their, um, their favorite was from that session and then that person will also win some scholarship money so you can see in the middle picture there we host a reception after the finals so we have um, a pretty full um, heavy appetizer hot and cold um, catered event we have a, a bar a cash bar um, and then we invite you know faculty staff community members the judges the participants um, one of the big things we ask is for the participants to invite their family and friends and bring them on campus and everybody is invited to um, join us. We also hire a professional photographer, which really helps um, catch all these moments. And then we also hire um, the videographer um, because we have a YouTube channel and I can share that too. But if you go to UNLV Graduate College YouTube and we have a channel just from all of the um, presentations from the finals. And then you'll see different channels that are all our professional developments that we filmed. We have another event called um, Student Showcase, and we film those. So everybody is hearing all of our graduate students that participate, all the research that they're working on. Um, and then what we noticed too is a lot of during the mix and mingle, faculty or family members will come up and say, um, introduce themselves, I'm so intrigued by your research. And really, it's a great networking event as well. OK, prizes. So. Um, <laughs> We have in the preliminary rounds, remember I said um, each cohort competes, um, each room is going to have a first, second, and a third um, place, and they move on to the semifinals. And you can see that they each um, first place will get 200, second 150, and third 100. And then um, the audience choice, I believe, is $100 when we get there. Um, for semifinal rounds, we have those three rounds, and each round is going to have a first, second, and third. First place 200, second place 150, third place $100, and then final is um, our third place gets $500, second place wins $750, and first place wins $1,000. Now, this is all scholarship money um, that's been ear tagged through that funding source <laughs> in the grad college. Because, um, y'all, there's a lot that goes on, I guess, in the back end how different money can be allocated. So, that money is from specifically for scholarship money. And so some people, right, if you get all the way to the finals, that means you made it, you won a scholarship from the first round, the second round, and the third round if you, if, you, if you place in all three of them. So that adds up really nicely. And the money goes into um, their student accounts. So if they owe any money or they want to use the money to pay for next semester, the money will be there. Um, or they can have it a direct deposited into their bank account and use it however they wish. Okay, so everybody's getting prizes too. Um, so even if you don't place, every participant is getting um, 
a Rebel Grad Slam t-shirt and a gift bag. All of our judges get the same, a t-shirt and a gift bag. Sometimes the gift bags will be something different. Like one year we gave the judges calculators, but they were like, um, like book calculators that also had uh, post-its in it. Um, we'll give out mugs, travel mugs, uh, but everyone loves. So you can see we're really big on our t-shirts. I'm wearing the one for the event today. <laughs> um, so it's kind of one of those highlights everybody looks forward to. And we try to change up the design and the color of the shirt in case some people are participating year after year. Um, and same for the judges. We have some judges who have been um, with me since the very beginning when we created the event. So um, the other prizes, um, the college with the most grad rebel participants, they get a free lunch. So we look and we see by college, how many students participated. And we just put together a nice little, it's mostly pizza and dessert and, and stuff like that, but um, it always has a great turnout. And we don't just invite the students that participated, the whole college is invited. So we put out an email to all the grad students in that college, because it's a good way too to plug the event, because maybe they weren't ready to apply to participate this year, but they want to participate next year. So now they're like, oh, okay, I see what this is. I want to get involved now. Um, and then the overall first place winners college is awarded the Rebel Grad Slam trophy and they get to keep it and display it for the academic year. So most of them keep it right in their dean's office or um, a high traffic area. And then the first place winner will participate in the Western Association of Graduate Schools, WAGS for short, 3MT competition. So um, we were, my uh, boss at the time was on the WAGS um, board and said, you know, all of us are doing all these different great competitions at our, our schools. Why don't we bring the winners from all of our schools to our annual Western Association of Grad Schools conference and host a 3MT there? So we now do that. It's the exact same format with the PowerPoint, with the um, you get three minutes, and then everyone um, donates the scholarship money so that we have a top three winners getting some scholarship money. And then all schools have agreed to, to part, um, to fund the travel, um, for, for our participants. So everyone just brings one winner and we pay for the travel per diem, um, anything that no cost to the student whatsoever. And then of course they could win more scholarship money. So that is, um, rebel grad slam. And I should say the rebel comes from, cause that's our mascot. <laughs> we're the UNLV rebels. So we play off of, um, that word in case anybody was wondering where the rebel came from. Okay. So that was one way that we, um, showcase highlight, get students to talk about their research network. And then this is the second way. Um, we, I mean, we definitely have more than two, but these are our two biggest events um, for students to share their research is Rebel Grad Slam and then the GPSA Annual Student Research Forum. And um, this is a long tradition at UNLV for something to be at UNLV for 25 years straight um, with being such a young institution like this is huge. I, I, I can't like overexpress that. So in 2023, uh, next year, we'll host the 25th one. And this is mostly run by our Graduate and Professional Student Association, which is essentially our student government for grad students. And then we co-host, uh, co-sponsor um, the grad college with them. So Rebel Grad Slam is always in the fall and this event's always in the spring. And this spring event showcases the excellence in research conducted at the graduate student level and um, more than 160 students participate each year and from over 40 disciplines. Um, so I should have mentioned earlier too, we have um, over, now we have over 175 programs, um, masters, PhDs, and um, so that we want it open to everybody. Um, and it, it, we get a great representation from across the board interdisciplinary for something like this. Okay. So <laughs> the annual student research forum is very conference style um, format. So students either present their work through a poster, like you can see in the photo, um, or they're gonna do a podium presentation, kind of like what I'm doing right now. Um, and we had a photographer for this event, so you can see these, these people in action. Um, the 10 minute podium presentation usually includes a slide deck. Um, they can use PowerPoint or one, I know there's a lot of like new ones 
is totally up to them. We don't force them to use any specific program, um, but we do encourage the use of um, some sort of visual. And then if somebody is choosing the poster presentation, it's a five minute presentation in front of their poster, like you see here in the photo. And then um, both the podium and the poster sessions are evaluated by faculty judges. Um, and same thing, they have a rubric um, and it is super strict, easy to follow. Uh, and you can also see both the rubrics for the this judging event and for Rebel Grad Slam on our websites because we want students to see them. We want them to know what they're being judged on so they can appropriately um, prepare. Okay, so a lot of the prizes for this event, um, I know the Grad College helps sponsor them, um, and then we also help with the event. So once everybody's done with their presentations and everything is all the tallying and scoring is going on, um, there's a beautiful catered lunch. Um, usually the dean will do a welcome, the provost usually comes, and um, at the end of all of the speeches and welcomes, and, and the, the bottom right, you can see our current GPSA president, she also does a welcome. Um, session winners are granted monetary awards um, to support their advanced, to advance their research. The podium session winners, um, and again, it's it's like Rebel Grad Slam where there's different sessions and there's a winner from each session. Um, first place in each room gets a $500 scholarship and the second place in each podium room gets a $350 scholarship. And then for the poster session, same thing, everybody's broken down into a time slot. And for each time slot, there's a first place winner for $400 and a second place winner for $250. And the scholarships work the same way that I mentioned earlier. They go into their account and either can be direct deposited into their bank account or can be used to fund anything that they want to at UNLV, their choice. Okay, so. Um, our student government, GPSA, um, has a lot of funding opportunities for our graduate students that we are so thankful for. And uh, usually what, what we do, is, since they have the committee set up, their representatives from um, all the different colleges on campus, all the different programs on campus, um, we have an annual day of giving and we host um, competitions in the grad college. So for students that... Um, so anybody that donates that day, um, they can donate to the research fund, they can donate to our grad academy, they can donate um, uh, discretionary funds, things like that. So we always say that if the research award um, category hits $10,000, we're going to unlock $10,000 and give it to this committee that gives away the research um, money to the students. So um, and in addition, GPSA has over $175,000 budgeted to support graduate and professional students um, annually. So throughout the year, the GPSA awards research and travel grants to students to support projects directly affect their degree program and make a contribution to their discipline. In 2021 uh, to 2022, like I said, 175,000 was budgeted to support graduate and professional student research and conference travel via their scholarship fund. The annual research forum is the opportunity for students to share their GPSA sponsored work with the UNLV community. The forum, like I mentioned, is open to all graduate and professional students wishing to share their research, practice their presentation skills, or obtain constructive comments um, on their work from faculty. So um, in both events, they can request to have the judge um, comments. So we ask the judges, like they don't have to put their name on it, but to put the student's name on it, and the students can see what they scored well in, what they didn't score well in, and then some comments that might be written in. And on the judge side, it's not required that they write comments, but we encourage it because anything we can do to help the student get better of course, is the goal. Um, and it's important to know that participation in the annual research form is a requirement for students who received GPSA funding during the 21-22 active year. So every year, if students are applying and getting research money out of that $175,000 budget, they um, it's required that they participate um, in this forum as well. Uh, so what's great is they have a, a, an amazing online application process that you could Google if you were wanted to check it out. Um, but basically it asks them, what what are you requesting the money for? What are you gonna be used to? If you're traveling to a conference, are you attending? Are you presenting? Um, and then they ask for, you know, um, projected uh, flights, costs, registration fees, hotels, per diem, any like taxis, things like that. Um, and so they, the student is putting together this whole budget, which one is a great experience for them for wherever they're gonna do next in their career, but also what then, the um, representatives, all the students come together that are in this committee and they review all these applications and either fully fund, partially fund, or deny and ask for more information um, or deny and say try it for the next cycle, just depending on what the situation is. 
Um, so that is one of the biggest ways that my, my grad students can um, also for professional development. So if somebody says, I need the certificate for my hotel degree, and it would be great if I could do it in China, they would put together that whole proposal that's required, what they're, what they're requesting, um, and, I, and they can ask um, each year for um, funding. So you'd have to apply separately, but separately each year. So it's not like a one time and that's it. Uh, each year, the students can go in and, and reapply. So I know I talked a lot and I talked really fast, but um, hopefully that all came together to show you um, two of the most important ways that we encourage students to get out there and share their research. Um, if you want more information, these are the websites that I discussed. And of course you can just email me or call me directly. Um, and I'd love to chat with anybody. I've uh, had, um, I wanna say I presented at the Council of Graduate Schools on just um, our Professional Development Academy and Rebel Grad Slam. And um, I get a lot of questions, a lot of people wanna meet with me after because they wanna bring that to their school. And you don't have to start from scratch. Um, you know, we have the templates, we have the rules, the, the, you know what I mean? Like nobody has to reinvent the wheel. You can kind of take what we've already created and put your own spin on it if you wanted to. Um, or a lot of people ask me about budgeting, like where does the money come from? So if you guys have any of those questions, I can answer them now or um, let me see here. If anyone from the room wants to uh, ask a question, please come up to the mic. And uh, any virtual participants, please put a question in the chat. Can you guys see that big picture? Yes. Okay, so I just wanna let you know, we got to, um, we built a brand new graduate college about, in 2019, we opened in 2019. Um, I would just say I'll work, I'm just, in one of those roles where you build it, you build it, and, and it just, you put in the, sometimes you don't have all the staff and you don't have all the money that you need, but, we start from somewhere and we start at the foundation, we build it, we build it. And now, I mean, but we're, we're that whole second floor um, above Cookie Crumble, Roberto's, Pete's Coffee. Um, that's the grad college floor. Um, and we have a, um, a graduate commons there where students can come in and it's a computer lab and it's only for graduate and professional students. Um, but I just, I just want everyone to know, like, we literally started with nothing <laughs> and we've come a very long way in eight years. I'm trying to see how I stop sharing. So you can, I can see you guys. Okay, there we go. That's wonderful, Valerie. That's just, that looks like a really beautiful site. And uh, you really, you really accomplished a lot. You're right. <laughs> and now when you see the Office of Postdoc Affairs, that might make sense because now they want me to do that same thing with the Office of Postdoc Affairs. There was not one on campus. Um, and then they said, oh, let's give it to Valerie in the grad college. And I have no budget. I have <laughs> um, literally just starting it from the foundation and hope to build it to be as big as the grad academy. Sorry. Um, so like, how many postdocs do you have? Great question. Um, we saw a dip um, after during COVID. Um, so I'd say right now we're at about 42. We need to be at like 142. <laughs> okay, cool. I need to talk to you because I'm in the same position. I have like 30 something postdocs and I work in the graduate school and there's no budget. And what school are you at? Um, UNC Charlotte. Oh my gosh, let's let's definitely talk because I, I can show you how far we've already come. I have a top tier um, advisory board with faculty members. I've created three budget proposals. Um, I've created an award uh, that just got approved in March. And right now, we just, just got approved. It got funding from the provost office to have a doctoral to postdoc program. So my docs, right, who are doing all this crazy research and they're like, I don't wanna graduate, I wanna finish my research. And the faculty are like, don't graduate, I want you to finish with me. Well, now they can apply for this program. So they graduate, which helps my graduation numbers. And now they're starting this postdoc position, guaranteed job with the salary. And so, yeah, let's definitely talk. Oh, my gosh. That's more exciting stuff in the past five seconds than I've heard all week. I'll definitely connect. Yeah, I'm, so glad. I'm so glad. Just make sure when you email me, you type my name right because it will autocorrect. Oh, gotcha. That's amazing, Valerie. Any other questions? I want you to come to our university and do this all for us. All right. <laughs> and it was really hard because I'm just staring at like a, um, a PowerPoint screen. I wish I could like 
see faces and do all that stuff. Um, but maybe, hopefully next time. Well, it doesn't look like we have any more questions. We, we want to thank Valerie Burke from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas for her wonderful presentation. And I think a lot of us will be in touch with you. Thank you so much. I hope so. Thank you.